Today, we're diving deep into two mistakes that you're likely making that are keeping your blood sugar levels high. If you don't focus on fixing these issues, it's likely that you're just gonna have high blood sugar levels for the years to come. If you're dealing with prediabetes and type 2 diabetes, you likely know that managing your blood sugar levels is a never-ending battle. One day, your readings are looking great or at least getting there, and the next, you're getting spikes all over the place for no reason at all. It's frustrating. It's exhausting and it can make you feel like you're doing something wrong. But here's the thing. What if I told you that the approach that we have all been taught about managing diabetes is actually missing the bigger picture? What if focusing solely on controlling your blood sugar levels is actually what's keeping you in this never ending cycle? Today, I'm going to be sharing with you two critical reasons behind the reason why your blood sugar may still be running high, backed by research and science. More importantly, I'll be walking you through practical solutions that you can apply starting today that are going to improve your blood sugar levels, just like the members in our community that are seeing the best blood sugar levels of their life. If you're new here, my name is Jose. I am an exercise physiologist that is passionate about helping people restore their metabolic health. So make sure to subscribe and give this video a like so you don't miss any of our content about reversing the root cause of high blood sugar levels. Let's get started. Reason number one, your blood sugar is still high. You are focusing on controlling the disease instead of reversing the root cause of the problem. Let me explain because there is a crucial difference here. Controlling blood sugars is very different than focusing on the reversal of the root cause, known as insulin resistance. But first, let's understand what insulin resistance actually is. Insulin is a hormone that is produced by your pancreas that helps move glucose from the bloodstream and into the cells, where it's used for energy. When you develop insulin resistance, your cells stop responding to the signals of insulin. Think of it like this. Insulin is like a key that opens the door of the cell so glucose can go inside. With insulin resistance, the lock of your cells have changed, so the keys don't work as well anymore. Your pancreas responds by making more keys, more insulin, in hopes to open more doors so glucose can finally come down. Eventually, this system breaks down, leading to chronically high blood sugar levels. The conventional approach to diabetes management often focuses just on the symptom, high blood sugar, rather than fixing the underlying faulty mechanism. And this is a reason why most people make the mistake of going on low carb diets, trying to control the disease by simply avoiding foods that raise their blood sugar levels. Don't get me wrong, controlling your carbohydrate intake can be helpful in the short term to manage symptoms. But research shows that this approach alone doesn't address the fundamental issue of insulin resistance. Think of it like this, avoiding carbohydrates is like fixing an overflowing sink by never opening the faucet ever again. You have not actually fixed anything. The sink is still clogged. You're simply not seeing water overflow because you have decided to stop using the sink altogether. In the same manner, when you avoid carbohydrates to fix your high blood sugar, you haven't really fixed anything. Your cells are still clogged and unresponsive to insulin. So the moment that you decide to eat an apple, your blood sugars are still going to skyrocket. That's your body's way of telling you that your cells are still resistant to insulin. Simply restricting your carbohydrate intake without addressing other lifestyle factors may lead to initial blood sugar improvements, but may not significantly improve insulin sensitivity in the long term. I get it, it's no secret that a low carbohydrate diet will drop your blood sugar levels. By drastically reducing carbohydrate intake, your blood sugar has less spikes, hence people see an improvement in their blood sugar levels. But here is the key issue. Lower blood sugar in a system deprived of carbohydrates doesn't necessarily mean improved metabolic health. True insulin sensitivity is measured by how well your body handles carbohydrates, not just lower blood sugar levels. A low carb diet keeps your blood sugar low simply by removing the thing that raises it carbs, but that's not even fixing the problem. Real metabolic flexibility means that you're able to eat carbohydrates, the healthy ones, without drastic spikes and crashes. If you follow a low carb diet for too long, you actually become less efficient at processing carbohydrates correctly. 
a form of physiological insulin resistance? Well, you may think, I'm just gonna avoid carbohydrates my whole life. Sure, you should definitely avoid sodas, cookies, chips, but what about other forms of carbohydrates like apples, cherries, sweet potatoes, or to be more general, whole grains, legumes, vegetables, fruits? Which, by the way, the more of those that you eat, the lower your risk of developing type 2 diabetes in the first place. Isn't that interesting? Yes, the more plant-based whole foods that you eat, the higher your chances of improving your blood sugar levels if you currently are dealing with prediabetes or type 2 diabetes. Isn't it interesting that the foods that many diabetics avoid can actually reverse insulin resistance? Scientific evidence indicates that complex carbohydrates rich in resistant starch and fiber, support improved insulin sensitivity over time when included in an overall healthy eating pattern. So the key distinction here is between a strategy that barely manages blood sugar levels like a low carb approach versus one that gradually improves your cell's ability to respond to insulin normally again, like a predominantly plant-based whole food diet. When we focus on the latter, something amazing happens. Your body begins to heal and those daily fluctuations become less dramatic over time. This has been well documented all over the medical literature. Plant predominant diets high in fiber, complex carbs, and lower in saturated fat improve blood sugar levels by reversing the root cause of this condition. Aside from the published research, I see it every single day in members of our community. So I personally don't need more reassurance that this way of eating fixes the problem at its root. Check this message from someone who went through our program and fixed her insulin resistance and improved her tolerance to carbohydrates. Kristen sent us a message saying, I had the worst time with oats in the beginning. Once I completed your program and reversed insulin resistance, I have no problems with them. Had some this AM, a big bowl with almond butter, strawberries, and chia seeds, my favorite combo. My sugar before was 89 and two hours after I ate, 77. To give you some background, Kristen came to us a couple years ago with a fasting blood sugar value over 300 and an A1C above 10%, highly insulin resistant and avoiding all carbohydrates like the plate. Now she eats more carbs than ever, the good kind, and her blood sugar just keeps improving. Or this other person who followed our advice. She sent us a message saying, so I have to tell you that since I have started following you, and all your advice, my A1C has gone down to 4.6. I was scared to death of any and all carbs at first and was afraid to follow what you said about eating them. Now I do eat them, the right ones. And basically that's the only thing that I eat now. My blood sugar never goes above the 80s. I am so grateful for everything you share. It has made my life more enjoyable and healthy again. I don't feel deprived of anything. Thank you, thank you. Those are the messages that we get from Instagram. So it's not just a diet. Insulin resistance is a lifestyle disease. And as such, we have the power to prevent it or reverse it by changing our lifestyle habits. This brings us to reason number two. If you don't focus on reversing insulin resistance and increasing your insulin sensitivity through lifestyle changes, then you're always going to have problems when you eat any kind of carbohydrate, even the healthy ones, like an apple. And unfortunately, that will always keep you in the never-ending cycle of struggling with high blood sugar and eventually being put on medication. And if you're already taking medications, the dosages are just going to keep increasing over time. Let's look at what research tells us about insulin sensitivity and how we can improve it naturally. Large-scale research has shown that lifestyle modifications can be more effective than medication alone at preventing the progression of prediabetes to type 2 diabetes. Clinical evidence suggests that people who make comprehensive lifestyle changes may reduce their risk significantly more than those relying solely on medication. But what exactly does a comprehensive approach to improving insulin sensitivity actually look like? It's not just about diet, though that's very important. Multiple studies have shown that several interconnected factors matter when you're trying to improve your insulin sensitivity. Number one, physical activity. Both resistance training and cardiovascular exercise have been consistently shown to improve insulin sensitivity. Research indicates that even a single session of exercise can have a beneficial effect on insulin function that lasts for several days. Number two, quality sleep. Scientific evidence highlights that poor sleep 
can significantly reduce insulin sensitivity, even in otherwise healthy individuals. The connection between sleep quality and glucose regulation is now well established in the scientific literature. Number three, stress management. Chronic stress leads to elevated cortisol levels, which directly interfere with insulin function. Research suggests that mindfulness practices may help reduce stress hormones and improve various aspects of metabolic health. And number four, of course, nutrition. A plant-predominant dietary pattern, as I mentioned at the beginning of this video, is one of the most effective approaches, not only for improving blood sugar control, but also for enhancing your overall health. This is a conclusion strongly supported by evidence-based research. If you want a full list of the 10 most important habits that members of our program are following to reverse prediabetes and type 2 diabetes, I'll leave the link below this video. It's free. Go grab it. Now, when I say a plant-based whole food diet, you may be thinking, okay, what do I eat? Well, this includes colorful vegetables and fruits, quality plant-based proteins like beans, chickpeas, lentils, tofu, healthy fats like avocados and nuts, and fiber-rich foods that support a healthy gut microbiome like non-starchy vegetables. I'll go ahead and make a comprehensive video about what you can eat on a plant-based whole food diet. But in the meantime, if you need help and guidance, go ahead and download our free guide. I'll go ahead and leave it below this video as well. And in there, you're gonna find a seven day free meal plan. The beauty of this comprehensive approach is that all of these lifestyle factors work synergistically to improve insulin sensitivity, meaning that the whole is greater than the sum of its parts. When you combine these strategies, you're not just managing symptoms, you're addressing the root cause of insulin resistance from all angles. And the most amazing thing, as your insulin sensitivity improves, you will notice that you can eat carbohydrates without drastic spikes and crashes. That apple or that banana or that sweet potato that you used to be afraid of because your blood sugars would skyrocket when you eat them, they're gonna become the best part of your day. I want to be clear, reversing insulin resistance is not an overnight process. It's taken years for this condition to develop and it's going to take consistent effort to reverse it. But the human body has a remarkable capacity of healing itself when it's given the right environment. In our community, we have seen incredible transformations. People who were once dependent on one, two, three, or more medications are now living a life free of disease with zero drugs in their system. Members who couldn't go up a flight of stairs without getting winded now are going on hikes and playing with their children and grandchildren with no problem at all. Some people see results within weeks. For some others, it might take a little bit longer. But the most important part is staying consistent. The most powerful part for me is seeing people being able to break free from that psychological burden of always worrying about their blood sugar levels and food choices. That freedom is priceless. And remember, you don't have to do this alone. We are here to help you out. Let me know in the comments below if you have any questions or if you want to share your experience with any of these lifestyle changes that I have talked about. What strategies have worked for you? What challenges are you facing? Let's support each other in this journey. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and share it with someone who might benefit as well. Don't forget to look at the description below and grab the guides and checklists that I talked to you about. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.